Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moldy Worm Gaming Channel. My name is Moldy Worm 4975 and today we're doing some more work on the Mini Cooper S. <laughs> So, so far we've done a few things on the Mini, we have replaced the steering wheel, and there we go. New R53 steering wheel is installed, and in the last episode we put the flat R50 style filler cap on, and we're going to be putting on the R50 uh, British Racing Green flat filler caps. Today we're going to be replacing the SatNav DVD reader because the one that I have in the car at the moment isn't working. So I've ordered a new one, we're going to take the old one out and replace it with the new one and hopefully then the SatNav should work. So before we do that I'm going to show you all where the DVD player is actually located. So if you're trying to find it yourself, um, I didn't actually know on these uh, R53s is actually located under the driver seat so what I'm going to do is show you on my phone so what you want to do is just slide the front seat forwards and located under the front seat you will see there is a little tiny flap just here and the DVD player is located just in there you can just see it in there uh, it's not the easiest thing to show you, but um, in a moment I will show you uh, actually where it is properly once we get it out. So the first job we've got is removing the seat here, uh, the driver's seat. Now I've already gone ahead and actually taken out a few bolts, but I'll show you there is four bolts that holds the seat on, and then we're going to remove it completely to get the DVD player out. Now, just before we do, a small disclaimer, make sure you disconnect the battery before you remove the seat. I'll show you in a minute that there is three uh, little connectors under the seat. Um, yours may only have two. Uh, I have three because I've got heated seats. So depending on whether you have heated seats, you'll have one. Uh, you'll have two or three clips, but before you remove those, you need to disconnect the battery so you don't get an airbag warning light on the dash. Once you've disconnected the battery, leave it for a good 15 minutes because the ECU is programmed in these R53s to stay running for 15 minutes after that. So the first job we have here is actually removing this bolt here. If I, I will zoom in for you. And you need to remove this bolt right here. There are four of these bolts. So there's one located on the right front. There's one located on the left front over there. And then one on the back two corners as well. So go ahead and loosen them first. And that should loosen the seat. Now I'll bring the camera in a little bit closer here. So you can see exactly what it is that I'm doing. So you can see that under the seat here, as I mentioned earlier, there is one, two, three connectors. Now all of the um, R50 and R53 minis, they have the blue and the yellow, and they're both for the airbag. So you'll definitely have both of these, and if you've got the heated seats, like my car has, then you'll have this third clip on here. So again, before you do this, make sure you have disconnected the airbag for 15 minutes, or the battery, sorry. And then you can just go ahead and unclip all these. Let me just put that back. That's just popped off there. So that was one disconnected, and they're very simple to disconnect. Just push the back bit, and they should just pop right off like that. And there you go, the wiring harness there is disconnected. All the bolts are out of the seat and all the connectors. So now, I'll just move the camera over a, li a little bit. Just so I can uh, remove the seat. So it's probably best to keep it folded as you remove it, because then it's a bit smaller. There we go, that is the driver's seat removed from the vehicle. And now you can see the floor panel 
down here in the bottom, this is where the DVD uh, player is located, we have a lot easier access to it now. So go ahead and remove the seat. Um, the first time I did this actually, I didn't remove the seat. And it is possible to get it out, but it's just a whole lot easier if you do remove the seat. So now we've removed the seat, we've got this plate on the top here. And um, I've already gone ahead and done this because it's not very difficult. There is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then right next to this little flap to access a DVD player, there is nine and ten um, of these little screws. And I'll show you what they look like. They look like this and you want to go and remove those uh, shouldn't take you that long they are also um, torque bits as well they're slightly smaller um, but go ahead and remove those and then from there you should be able to slide this panel out now it's um, got a little housing in here so slide it out of there first and then slide it back that way and if you flip the unit over you can see that the DVD player here oh make sure I'm showing you that the DVD player is actually mounted with four bolts to the underside of this lid and that is what we're replacing today so when you take this out um, there will also be some connectors in the back of your DVD unit which I have already gone ahead and removed so there is one here for the aerial that's a tiny little one and then there is one that goes to the ECU and one for the power and they're very simple to remove just remove them from the back of the unit from there you have this little tree which mine at the moment is filthy and disgusting so before we put the new one in here I'm going to come in and hoover and clean this whole area under the seat um, but there's this tray in here that has the wire in and you can see that in this corner it is like fastened in here but there is this little sliding thing and you can just slide that out and then you have the bottom tray there which mine's filthy you can remove that and clean it all properly so I'm just going to put that out of the way for now and we'll just tuck those wires down there and those seat wires can just live down there for now and then this box here just has four ordinary screws or bolts sorry would be about the right size yeah so that is a 8 mil little bolt on there or nut and then you just want to go ahead and remove those it might be easier actually just to use the I've got one of these, it's basically a screwdriver but then it has the little square end so you can put these little ratchet devices on the end like that and then you basically have like a ratchet uh, screwdriver and they make it really easy for removing bolts like this and there we go, they're all four removed and then this unit on the top should just come off like that and there we go, that is our DVD player, that's the back, which I didn't show you very well earlier. That is for the aerial, the little silver aerial one. Then you've got the blue and the purple corresponding. And then at the front, that's what it looks like. I've actually got it upside down. Um, you've got the eject button over here and then the little slot that you put the CDs in. Now mine is currently not working, so that is why I'm replacing it. Um, you can remove these and buy them second hand which is what I did I just bought mine from a scrapyard and um, hopefully it works this one will be going off to the shop and then up for sale so if you want to buy that that will be available for sale um, as this video is out um, but that is basically how to remove it I'm going to give this a good clean in here now because it's a bit filthy and then we're going to bring in the new unit. I'm going to check that it works before I put it in. And then we're going to bolt everything back in and put the seat back in. Okay, so we've had a good clean up here. You can see this side was all filthy before. I've hoovered inside the actual like hole here. The tray that was filthy before is nice and clean now. 
so we can start assembling everything. I've checked the new sat nav here actually works and it works perfectly. Um, if you're looking to get one of these yourself you can find them on eBay and it has all the same connectors you can see which is absolutely perfect. So what we're going to do first, we're going to slide that back in there just like that then we're going to tuck that under now this cable here for the seat that's the wiring hand for the seat keep that out of the way because you'll need to plug that into the seat later and that should just nicely sit in there just like that and it is a little bit loose but that is because we've not put the panel on the top yet so there we go next we actually have the panel so this is the panel that goes under the seat um, that we took out that attaches to the actual reader and again I've gone ahead and cleaned this one up so it's nice and clean you can see this here is the flap so it actually goes like that so this is the flap that you open to access the reader so it will go in like that so we need to attach the reader before we put this back in so I've got the new reader over here that is just going to sit on top of there be careful that you don't unplug any of the wires when you do this that just sits on there and it has a little flap on the front here so you can access the reader when it's bolted into the car so I'll go ahead and put all these screws back on first and there we go that is mounted to the lid there now uh, what we need to do is actually flip this over so be careful with the wires that are plugged in here you don't want to stretch any of these and it actually goes like that but you need to put this in here first that slides under here you may have to just lift that up again make sure that is well out of the way there is a little cut out for it just there and make sure that slots in exactly how it was when you took it out which mine is not doing there we go that's better may just need a little bit of a wiggle um, there we are and then you've got your bolts that we took out earlier we've got um, some of these ones and some of the littler ones go ahead and put all those back in now okay so the plate is on here we've got all the four bolts that hold the top plate on and then we've got the other screws that hold the top plate here to the bottom uh, tray uh, they're all in and tight now so we've just got one two three four holes that hold on the seat and we've just got to connect up these and then we are done and there we go the seat is back in fully bolted down we've got a new dvd player in there the sat nav in the car now works absolutely perfectly which is brilliant i've got a working sat nav in my new r50 cooper s that is going to do it for this video though hopefully you have enjoyed hopefully it was useful for some of you let me know in the comments if you're having any issues and i'll try my best to help you out that's going to do it for this video though thanks all so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one